Hey, this is Stacy Hayes. I'm glad you decided to listen to the prodigal son. I spent over a decade thinking God was mad at me and he was some bipolar old man sitting on his throne with a lightning bolt in one hand and a hammer in the other just waiting for me to mess up. That's not God, that's religion. God loves every one of us no matter where we're at in life. And he's waiting to see us coming to him like the prodigal son did in Luke fifteen eleven through 24. Read it. You'll be glad you did. Believe what God's word says about you over any opinion you have of yourself and watch God work a miracle in your life. Now, let's see what the word has to say today. Father, we thank you, God, for this opportunity to preach your word. Lord, we just pray that you'd use us for your honor and your glory. Lord, we give you all the praise and honor and glory for it all. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'll be taking my scripture today from Mark, the fifth chapter. And I want to ask you something. Have you ever in your life had somebody that would encourage you? Just that person that... that Somehow that just found an answer for everything. You know, I had that kind of a person in my life when I was young. And I thank God for a father-in-law that that made me feel like I could conquer the world. We're not going to talk about him this morning, but I just, that's what I'm trying to get over. I'm going to do my best to get over to you today is, is God's there for you. And he's the number one encourager. His word is true above all things, and you can take it to the bank and believe it regardless of what man has to wants to tell you, regardless of what Satan's thoughts that he puts into your head, regardless of how you feel and what's going on in your life, you can take God's word. And stand on it like a rock and be for sure and know that without a doubt, he'll never fail you. He said he'd never leave us nor forsake us. He'd go with us always into the, uh, even to, to the end of the world. And for a lot of years, I had a, I couldn't believe that. I allowed my circumstances and, and my mistakes to push me away from God. It wasn't that he was mad at me it was just that I had just made so many mistakes and done so many things that I felt condemned for myself that that I I just didn't believe what his word says you know his word says if you've been Christ you're a new creature and I thought every time I messed up that I I guess I fell out of God's good graces <laughs> and that was so so wrong so wrong to stand and, and, and doubt, just doubt. And, and, and the reason that I fell so short and fell so, felt so like, like I was, you know, just such a bad person because I was trying to do it all myself. Now, there's millions of people in this world that, that, that are good intentioned people that do their dead level best to, to live a, a Christian life but fall short every day. And it's because they're living in their own strength, their own abilities, instead of abiding in Him. But I want to talk to you this today about fear. Fear crippled me. I've, ne- I've, I've never been afraid of a man or, or an animal, or something like that. But the fear of un- the unknown terrified me. And I lived in it for years. It drove me. Uh, it, it drove me. And, and fear will drive you if you'll allow it. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you to a, a, a scripture in Mark the fifth chapter, starting with the 21st verse. It's a pretty good bit of reading, so just bear with me. It says, When Jesus passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, 
Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. And then it says, And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind him, and touched his garment. For she said, If I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in him that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and thou sayest, Who touched me? And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. And while he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? You know, Jairus had asked Jesus to come and lay hands on his daughter and heal her. And in the process of of just a few minutes, somebody walks up from his house and says, There's no need. She's dead. Now, the 36th verse is what I'm going to speak on today. And that is, As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken. He saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. That's 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 what I want to talk to you about today. And to tell you, be not afraid, only believe. Like I told you, fear drove me for years. Fear of the unknown Not what I could see, not fleshly man or uh, animal or storms or, you know, I chase storms for a living. Uh, That doesn't, that doesn't bother me, but the unknown, it, it, it drove me. And I thank God today that I can stand on God's word and tell you that I have no fear of that anymore because I know who's leading and guiding me. That's something that that I'm going to get across to you this morning. I'm going to get across to you and let you know that you can stand on what God's Word says over and above, over and above your circumstances, over and above what man may say. Over and above what Satan may be whispering in your ear, you're never going to make it. You're never going to. You're never going to live up to the, the expectations of some people. But no, I'm going to tell you: stand on God's word, regardless of what's standing in front of you. I I, I talked about it at the last podcast and. And I'm going to say a little bit about it this morning. But David, when he stood before Goliath, stood before a giant that physically could have easily killed him. But David wasn't standing in his own strength. He was standing on the covenant that he had with God Almighty. He knew without a doubt that, that God would back him up. He knew without a doubt that there wouldn't be anything that God wouldn't do for him if he'd step out by faith and go against this man that had defied the armies of Israel. 
I'm going to read another scripture. It's Exodus 14, 13. God gave me this scripture probably a year ago. I, I, I looked at it for a year, literally looked at it for a year. But it says, but Moses told the people, don't be afraid. Just stand still. Now, this is the this is the New Living Translation. He says, don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. The King James Version says, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Now, I, I, I stood on that, and that's, that's about all God would give me for a long time because he wanted me to stand in faith on him, stand believing him, and I did. That's all I, I could do because I had come to a, a place in my life that, that I was going to see God work. I was going to see him work. Uh, the The world had had wrung me out and hung me out to dry. And there was no other place that I felt comfortable except looking to God because I had had spent all, like the prodigal son, spiritually, I had spent it all. I was bankrupt. But yet, through it all, God never left me. Through it all, God still loved me. And that fear that had aided me over the years and driven me to, to just do things, just to, to look to substance, to get that fear out of my head, it began to slowly go away. Why? Because I was constantly putting God's word into my life. And instead of doubting it, and, and, and that's, 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 it's so sad that, you know, there's a lot of people, you, you tell them, so, you know, that, well, God's word says this. Well, the, well, they tell you, so, well, I know that. You know, I've read that. I, you know, I believe that. But do they really believe it? That's the sad part. That's, that's the sad part. You know, Peter, when he stepped out of the boat, he asked the Lord, said, if it be you, bid me to come. He said, come. Peter stepped out of the boat, and the Bible says that he walked on the water. But said it said he started looking around at his circumstances, at the wind blowing boisterous. And he began to sink. Now, you can't take the take anything away from Peter. The Bible says that he walked on the water. But yet, when he took his eyes off Christ, those doubts, that fear of what Peter knew as a fisherman and what Peter knew from the sea that he had fished all of his life, more than likely, of what those waves could do to him, drowned him and never to, to never be found and that fear overrode his faith that fear of that storm overrode his faith and he began to sink and and that's that's what I want to talk to you today about is don't allow the fears of this world the fears, just the natural human fears that that somewhere along your in your life has been put into you. Don't allow that to hinder you. Don't allow that to hinder your faith. I know people that that are they're just fearful of everything. Jumpy, just it's 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 sad to see the state some people are in because of just fear fear will cripple you satan uses fear like a sledgehammer in a lot of people's lives many people fear drives people to to never step out to never look to god for for help or uh, or understanding 
for fear of what people will think of them. For fear of of failing. I mean, Satan uses it like a sledgehammer on people. And it will cripple you. But I'm here to tell you that I've got the word of God that says he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll be with you always, even to the end of the world. Isaiah 52, 12 in the Amplified Version. I read this a lot. But it says, for you will not go out with haste, nor will you go in flight as was necessary when Israel left Egypt. For the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your rear guard. And just plain old Stacy language, that verse says, the, the Lord will make a way in front of you, he'll clear your path, and he'll watch your back as you go. Now that's, that's, what, that's what I get out of that verse, that, that verse of Scripture. Glory to God, he'll watch your back, and he'll make a way if you'll allow him to. But we've got to overcome that fear. We've got to overcome that fear. Jesus told Jairus, says, be not afraid, only believe. And I want you to get a, get a hold of Matthew five thirty six and hold on to it. And be not afraid, and only believe. Because God's got a work for all of us to be doing. God's got a work for every one of us in his kingdom. He wants us to be at work building his kingdom. And fear stops a lot of people. The fear of of failing. The fear, The fear of not meeting up to other people's standards. But I'm here to tell you today. That God can use you, he will use you in a mighty way. But you've got to step out and don't allow fear to cripple you another day. Don't allow fear to to push you back. You know, the children of Israel went out into the to the to the wilderness. When they left Egypt, God parted the Red Sea and they walked through that Red Sea on dry ground. And I've never understood this, but I kind I, I, I kind of I'm beginning to to realize all it was because fear will blind you. Fear will blind you, and those people walked through on dry ground, got over to the other side, and watched the waves take over and cover up the whole Egyptian army, killed them all. And they walked out into that wilderness, and all that you know. The, the, I heard a man talk about it. Said that was the last time that the children of Israel praised God for a lot of years. Was when all that took place. But they left and went, went out, and all you heard was, "He took us out into the desert to let us die." Now, why in the world would a God that loves you? Take you out into the desert to let you die. He's for you, not against you. Religion has has so skewed the 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 visual of God. The vision the vision that most people have of God that he's some crazy old man just looking for a reason to beat you, knock you down and take things away from you, that ain't God. That is not God. That's religion. religion's skewed version of God. That ain't him. That may be a lot of his people, his misguided people, but that is not him. God loves you. He wants to be your best friend. He wants to be your guide. <laughs> And he wants to protect you. He wants to bless you. He wants to be a help to you in every way. But so many of us live in a in a fear-ridden world of, my God, he's going to get me. He's not out to get you. He's out to love you and bless you and help you so you can be a help to others. 
So that's what that's what I never understood about the way I lived. I knew better. But that fear of what I had done and all the all the mess that I had made in my life, that fear overrode my good sense. Just like I said, fear will blind you. It blinded the children of Israel to the fact of what God had done when they brought them through the, through the Red Sea on dry ground. They forgot all about it because the fear and the, and the torment of, of just, I don't know how to explain it other than just sheer ignorance of what they had already come through. That fear drove them and made them and, and blinded them to the fact that God was feeding them every day. He made sure they had water, everything. But yet they still, that's all they talked about. He's going to let us die in the wilderness. He's going to let us die in the wilderness. My God, he didn't put us here on this earth to let us fail. He put us here on this earth to provide for us, to love us, to care for us, and make a way for us. And that's what he wants to do for us, if we'll allow him. John 16.33. I want you to get this. John 16.33, Jesus says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you may you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Glory to God. Jesus said, Yeah, you're gonna have problems in this earth. You're gonna you're gonna have problems. But in me you'll have peace. Now hey you say, Well how how do I you know, how am I in him? Well uh Second Corinthians five twenty one says, For he was made to be sin for us that we might be the righteousness of God in him. Now, if, if, if you're born again, you're in him. If you're not born again, I'm here to tell you to read Romans 10, 9, and 10 and get born again. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Confess him with your mouth and you shall be saved. That's what God wants us to understand, that we don't have to operate on our own. We don't have to walk through this life fearful of everything that we come in contact with. Fearful of, of things that are going on in our life and, and, and worried about all the, the junk that, that comes against us and, and wonder and understand how, how am I going to overcome this? Well, you're going to overcome it through Jesus Christ and strengthen Him. Not in anything else but him. That's what we've got to see. That's what we we want to understand. That God, God himself is for us. God himself is, is there for us. And he wants us to succeed. And, and, he'll, and he'll bring us through this trouble if we'll just believe him. Fear drove me to forget all the things that God had always that God had always been there, and all the things that He had brought me through. Yeah, you know, I get out here and and walk and pray and and seek God about every day during the week. And and the other day I'm I was walking through the woods and praying, and something just come up in me. And I, I just, thank you, Lord. This is what I said. I said, thank you, Lord, that I can look ahead without fear of not knowing what's going on because I can look back and see what you've brought me through. Glory to God, that's, that's, a, that's a thrill to be able to look back as David did when he stood before Goliath and see that where God had brought him out of the paw of the hand, a paw of the lion and the paw of the bear, and that uncircumcised Philistine would be the same as they are. I can look forward in my life to anything that comes against me and 
be confident that God will bring me through it because I can look back and see all the things that he's brought me through. You can too if you really think about it. All the danger and and the, and the junk that, that he spared you from, that was God. Now we couldn't, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I couldn't pull my socks up of a morning without God helping me. I've come to that conclusion and understanding that my God, he's there for me. And his word is true. His word is true. People, we've got to see that. And if we'll look to him, look to the guidance that he gives us, In his word, my God, there's nothing we can't overcome. Isaiah 41.10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. (laughs) Do you get that? He's going to uphold us with the right hand of his righteousness. Not with, not with what we can come and come to do. Not anything like that. But, but with his righteousness. I have quit trying to stand in my own righteousness. Because my righteousness is filthy rags. That's not what, that's not what I'm trying to do. I don't, I'm not trying to point you in a direction to, to get you to, to try to stand in your own goodness. But to tell you that if you'll stand in God's goodness, stand in his strength and believe what his word says, he is more than he's more than enough to carry you through. And and what he says in his word is true. He loves you and he cares for you. And he wants more than anything to be your friend, to love you. And to tend to nurture you. But you've got to let him. Psalms 56.3 says, what time, what time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. Philippians 4, 6 and 7 says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. See this 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 peace that 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 you can you can possess is through Jesus Christ. The fear that I had in my life was directly directly linked to me listening. To everything the devil had to say. I heard a man say this one time. He said, when God speaks, faith comes. When Satan speaks, fear comes. And it's just like it. God spoke to my heart. He said, now who are you going to listen at? My goodness. That's something. <laughs> That's something right there. Because if we're living in fear, and I realized then that if I was living in fear, I was listening to the devil. I've purposed in my heart not to ever listen to him again. If it's not good, it ain't God. If it's meant to tear me down, if it's meant to 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 scare me in any way, it's it's not God. People, God wants to love you. He wants to assure you of one thing. Now, this whole podcast was started because Luke eleven fifteen, starting with the 11th verse, it's the story of the prodigal son. And, and for years, I lived that life. But I, the, the blessing... And the encouragement that I received from that scripture has brought me through so much because I realized that when that young man came back to his father and repented, the father stopped him. He didn't want to hear anything else other than repentance. 
father didn't br- didn't shame him, didn't bring up his past, didn't do anything other than restore him when he repented. That's that's what I'm. I want you to see today. People live in fear over their mistakes, and they think, oh "God, I'm you know they're ashamed of it." When God, God could care less what you have done when you repent. God loves you that much. And he stands just like that father did, looking at the horizon, waiting to see you come home. I'm asking you today, won't you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Allow him to be the light that he that he wants to be in your life to guide you and direct you when i come to understand and realize that that prodigal son went home and his dad didn't bring up one mistake that he had made no he didn't read it luke of 15 i'm, I'm sorry yeah, Luke fifteen, eleven through 24, he didn't bring up one thing about that young man's past. The Bible says he seen him at a distance and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the young man says, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. And the, and the, and the Bible says, and the father says, told the servant, said, go get a, a, the best robe and a ring, and sandals, and kill the fatted calf, and let's celebrate. Why? Because my son that was once dead is alive again. That father restored him. He put a robe on his back, a ring on his finger, and shoes on his feet, and set him at his table and celebrated that he was home. People, God wants to do that for every one of us. He's done it for me. You may say, well, I've never been saved. Well, that's that's not a problem at all. That's not one problem. Because you can get born again just as today, just as easy as I did years ago. And that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. I'm going to read it to you. Romans 10, 9 and 10. It says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans ten thirteen says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's that simple. God's not out to kill us. He's not out to hurt us. He's out to love us. But fear, fear drives people away because of this religious picture that's been drawn of God over the years. And all it is is religion. Religion trying to to push people in the direction that it wants them to go instead of pushing them to God. The Bible says it's the goodness of God that leadeth man to repentance, true repentance. I thank God every day that I've come to that conclusion and understanding that my God, He's he's so good to me. And He has shown me so much of how much he really loves me and cares for me and wants me to succeed in this life, in this Christian life, to be a light for him. You can be a light for him. Do away with that fear and come to Jesus Christ. Make him Lord of your life. You may say, well, I've been saved, but I've walked away. All you got to do is turn around, come to him, or allow him to be what he wants to be in your life, and that's Lord and Savior. 
to lead you and guide you to help you when you need help. I don't know if, if you know, I've got two kids and and you mo- well, you want more than anything to help them. But there's some times that they've just got to figure it out for themselves because they won't take advice. They won't, they won't allow you to help them. And I thank God that, that breaks God's heart a lot of times when when we stand and, and all he wants to do is help. All he wants to do is help us. And we're like a spoiled child pushing him away, saying, no, no. I've done that for years. Him standing with open arms, son, if you'll just allow me to, I'll get you through this. And I carried that load for years and years and years. I'll never carry it again. That's religious bondage that I'll never take on my life again. Why? Because I know the truth. And the truth has set me free. That Jesus Christ came and he died on the cross for me. For my past, present, and future sins. And I'm going to abide in him. I'm going to live in the peace of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And stand strong in him. I invite you to do the same. Seek out God's word. Seek out God's will in his word. Seek God in his word. Get somewhere where you're being taught the Bible and not a bunch of religious tradition. And find the Lord's will for your life. And I promise you. It's not hard. (laughs) I'm going to leave you with this. You know, the Bible, the Christ says, take my yoke upon you, on me. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The verse before that says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. People, I'm going I'm to I'm say something that makes a lot of people, religious people, uncomfortable and some of them mad. But Christ says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I'm going to tell you something right now. If it ain't easy and it ain't light, it ain't God. God don't don't mean for you to carry the burden. The Bible says to cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. God didn't mean for you to carry this load, this load of sin and and grief and, and, and fear that the world will pile on you, but give it to him and allow him to carry it. And I promise you, he'll make a way. Where, there you, where, where your eyes can't see a way. He's done it for me, and he, I promise you, he'll do it for you. Seek the Lord today in your life. Make him Lord and Savior today. I'm glad you tuned in. Feel free to get in touch. I like hearing from people who have found out that God loves them and realize that he's there for them in every aspect of their life. Don't go around another day beat down over your past mistakes. Give them to the Lord and let his word guide you. God bless you all and remember the Lord loves the abortion doctors as much as he loves the babies they're killing. God is no respecter of person. He loves us all no matter what mistakes we've made.